FedWarned Ripple XRP buyback will allow you retire in two years. Is it possible to relist XRP on Coinbase? What will such an event lead to? We will answer these questions in today's video. The current price of XRP for today is zero. 35 US dollars, and the trading volume for 24 hours is 13600000 US dollars. We are updating our XRP price in US dollars in real time. XRP has dropped 30% in the last 24 hours. Welcome to the Rich Club channel. If you like this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel. Do you think the analysts are right about XRP? Write the answers in the comments. Giving away 500 XRP at the end of the week. One random subscriber will receive XRP coins. Take a look at the instructions in the comments section. All you need to do is write the word XRP, watch the video to the end, to like and subscribe. The Relative Strength Index, RSI, has not been definitive over the past few days. Last week, the RSI held a neutral value of 50 as support, but recently this level has not passed. Thus, there may be some volatile dynamics during the weekend. Similarly, the Awesome Oscillator, AO, was also below zero. He has not yet shown a strong bearish impulse. The A-D line had a resistance zone that was directly overhead and was indicated by two dotted white lines. If A-D can overcome this region, it will be a sign of sustained demand for the XRP rally. The Directional Movement Index, DMI, showed the absence of a strong trend. ADX, yellow, it was at level 20, ADI just above the 20 mark. Technically, this indicated a bearish trend, but in general meant the absence of a significant trend over the past few days. The $0. 35 dash dollar zero. 36 range will be important to protect the bulls over the next day or two. The formation of a lower low below this area will signal bearish strength. Momentum indicators were inconclusive on the lower time frames. Bitcoin could also strongly influence the direction of XRP in the near future. Ripple objects to the Securities and Exchange Commission's plan to request additional pages and time to respond to additional Amici Curiae briefs in the ongoing lawsuit. Ripple objects to the SEC's suggestion that the SEC will request additional time or pages if other Amici Curiae submit summaries. This is another obvious attempt to further delay the consideration of this case, and the court should reject it. The SEC noted that it does not take a position on the Chamber of Digital Commerce's request to file an amicus curiae brief in the lawsuit. However, if Attorney John Deaton submits his own Amici Curiae briefs, the SEC said it would take more time and pages to respond to the amicus briefs. Although Ripple does not object to the Chamber of Digital Commerce's request to file an amicus brief, the blockchain company is categorically opposed to the SEC's suggestion that it will take more time and pages to object to additional summaries. According to Ripple, the comment is a deliberate attempt by the SEC to further cause unnecessary delays in the lawsuit. This is another attempt by the SEC to further delay the case, and the court should reject it, Ripple said in the letter. Ripple noted that it is not surprising that several Amici Curiae are trying to file a summary in the lawsuit because the SEC's overboard theory about what is considered a security threatens to unreasonably expand its powers beyond what is authorized by Congress. The blockchain company added that the court has already set limits on the number of pages for Amici summaries and objections and cannot simply provide additional pages for responding to arguments. The SEC is free to use the space already allocated in its opposition and respond to briefings to consider the arguments put forward by Amici, and to do so in accordance with the already established briefing schedule, as are the defendants. The court should not satisfy the SEC's request, Ripple added. However, if the court grants the SEC's request, Ripple said the changes should also apply equally to both parties. The litigation between the Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, and Ripple entered the phase of summary proceedings when the parties began to file petitions for a summary judgment. According to lawyer James K. Fillon, yesterday the parties filed petitions for a summary judgment. All documents are filed classified because the judge has not yet decided to what extent they can be disclosed to the public. Ripple and individual defendants, Chris Larson and Brad Garlinghouse, filed not only petitions for summary judgment, but also filed a legal memorandum in support of the summary judgment. According to Phelan, Ripple also filed an application under Rule 56. 1. 106 proofs and a declaration of a statement made by Michael K. Kellogg, a famous American writer. The Ripple defendants filed with the seal of the seal a motion for summary judgment, a legal memorandum in support of the motion for summary judgment, a statement under Rule 56. 1. A declaration by Michael K. Kellogg and 106 exhibits. Similarly, the Securities and Exchange Commission also filed a motion for summary judgment against Ripple and individual defendants, also classified. The Securities and Exchange Commission also filed a sealed copy of the statement attributed to Daphne A. Waxman, Senior Legal Representative of the Cyber Division of the Securities and Exchange Commission's Enforcement Division. In addition, the SEC sealed about 400 exhibits, according to the calculations of lawyer Fillon.
Attorney Phelan stated that the Securities and Exchange Commission also filed a memorandum of law supporting summary judgment and a Rule 56. One statement, along with statements by Jorge G. Tenrero and Leighton Neff. Stewart. Since then, the SEC has filed its memorandum in support of its motion for summary judgment, statements by Jorge G. Tenrero and Leighton Neff. Stewart, a statement on Rule 56. One, as well as hundreds of additional documents. Screenshots of the documents are below. It is noteworthy that all these petitions were filed yesterday under seal, classified, until the parties meet and confer to determine the necessary corrections that will be made. It is expected that in accordance with the recently approved briefing schedule on all sealing issues related to the summary trial, the parties will meet tomorrow to determine the necessary corrections to the latest submitted briefings. After the parties make corrections, the edited versions of the summary for summary proceedings will be available to the public on September 19, 2022. On Monday, September 19, 2022, the parties will submit publicly available edited versions of summaries in support of petitions for a summary judgment, making only those preliminary corrections requested by the parties, lawyer Phelan said. Meanwhile, attorney Jeremy Hogan, a partner at the law firm Hogan & Hogan, recently noted that he is looking forward to September 19, 2022. He said that this date will be notable as XRP holders will see several hidden details of the trial. Unexpectedly for everyone, Ripple and the Securities and Exchange Commission publicly filed petitions for summary trial over the weekend, although they were expected only today, September 19, 2022. Breaking, Ripple Labs, Brad Garlinghouse, and Chris Larson file motion for summary judgment seeking judgment as a matter of. Breaking, SEC files motion for summary judgment. The parties filed the petition separately in the Southern District of New York. The SEC built its argument on the premise that buying XRP in a joint venture makes the cryptocurrency an investment contract, that is, a security that should be regulated by U.S. securities laws. In addition, the SEC claimed that Ripple lured many investors to buy XRP, making them believe that they would make huge profits in the future, thereby implying that the cryptocurrency is a security. On the contrary, the defendants Ripple, Chris Larson and Brad Garlinghouse said that regulators could not prove that investors bought XRP, relying on the company to help them make a profit, since there was no agreement. According to Ripple's lawyers, token holders usually profit from the asset due to the forces of supply and demand. Based on this, XRP holders have no right to claim profits from Ripple. In addition, they cannot accuse the company of any violation if it does not profit from XRP, Ripple added. Ripple executives and observers of the case have already expressed their opinion on the petitions filed. According to Garlinghouse, CEO of Ripple, it is obvious that the SEC is not interested in applying the law in this case, adding, they want to redo everything in an unacceptable attempt to expand their jurisdiction far beyond the powers granted to them. By Congress. Today's filings make it clear the SEC isn't interested in applying the law. They want to remake it all in an impermissible effort to expand their jurisdiction far beyond the authority granted to them by Congress. Ripple General Counsel Stuart Alderotti also commented on the developments, saying that the SEC has not yet identified any investment contracts after two years of litigation. The SEC cannot satisfy a single point of the Supreme Court's Howey test. Everything else is just noise, Alderotti added. The day is finally here, our motion for summary judgment is public, you can view it here? Similarly, attorney Jeremy Hogan, a partner at the law firm Hogan Hogan, said that the Securities and Exchange Commission is now in big trouble after a recently filed motion for summary judgment. I just read the summaries, and the SEC has a couple of big problems. 1. Her expert agrees that most of the changes in the price of XRP are due to market forces, not Ripple. The Securities and Exchange Commission has failed to record that any of the XRP buyers have heard Ripple's alleged marketing pitch, a big problem because it has the burden of proving everything here. Video tomorrow. I just read the briefs and the SEC has got a couple big problems. 1. Its expert agrees that most of the changes in XRP price are due to market forces, and not Ripple. Ouch. These types of concessions are perfect for summary judgment. Next court dates. Ripple has almost a month to file an objection to this set of petitions, and it is expected that the summaries of objections will arrive by October 18. It is expected that the answers to them will be received by November 15, by which time all the briefings will be completed, and the judge will wait for the final decision of Torres. James K. Phelan predicts that on March 31, 2023 or earlier, Judge Torres will simultaneously make a decision on the petitions of experts and the decision in summary proceedings. What do you think are the prospects for XRP in 2023? Write your forecasts in the comments. Thank you for watching this video to the end. Please do not forget to like it and subscribe to the channel so as not to miss the release of new videos and do not forget about our contest, write in the XRP comments to add 500 XRP to your account.